Sweet. So what I want to do is I want to give you a quick tutorial on how to make like even shapes, or at least be able to control things a little bit as I'm watching some of you do uh, some of your shapes for your letters, since we're designing letters, I'm watching you, uh, A, a lot of you are adding too many points, but B, a lot of you are putting points in the wrong places. And so that's actually really important. So I'm just gonna make a real quick lowercase b or a d here, and I'm gonna show you how, you how I would start the letter and how I would go about making the curve of the d um, in a way that would work better. So first, if you're just making a letter, um, let's just, um, actually I just want no stroke here, so just gonna go black. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, click, and I'm gonna go straight down, and it, it's great how it snaps, okay? And I'm gonna go out here, and it snaps to it, and I'm gonna come up here, and then what I will do is I will just make it kind of triangular. I won't do any curves at first, and I already showed you that. But notice where I put the points. I'm gonna put them at the, what would basically be the middle of the curve. So there, 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 and there. So now I've got a lowercase b. So, um, and let's just do let's just do an inner uh, an inner one too. So I'm going to take the black arrow tool, click off of my object so that it's not selected. Then I'll double click and I'll make it a color so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Go back to the pen tool, and then it will help me line things up here really nicely. So there we go. So now I've got these two shapes. Highlight them both with the black arrow selection tool. Right click, make my compound path. So now we've, we're, we've all done this. So now I'm gonna go to my anchor point tool and I'm just gonna grab these and I'm gonna start creating the curves that I have. And here's the real key about this. When you're trying to make an object that is um, regular and even and precise, you want to do a couple of things. First off, you want your points at very key positions. So if you'll notice what I've done here is I, I have them just at the top. And so when I start changing things like changing the length of the arrows, I won't change the angle of the arrows very much at all. I'm only going to change the length and then my arrow or my arrows, my handles, not arrows, my handles will stay nice and flat, and I'm going to adjust this curve simply by changing the length of the handles as they come off the point. And then I can also just drag it straight down to kind of change the way it works. If I need to make this, say, shorter because it's going out too far, I can take both the points that are here, and I can just drag it in a little bit like that. So you can highlight and select two points at a time, three points, four points, by clicking and dragging with the arrow, white arrow tool. And now you can kind of change the way these things work just simply with um, a, you know, a simple movement of just those points. And because they're even, it makes things a lot easier. So if you notice here, I've got an anchor point here and I've got an anchor point here. I want those pretty close to each other because now it makes it a lot easier for me to create um, a line that is similar both on the top and the bottom. So let's say I wanted it to get a little thinner at the top here and I wanted it to stay thicker at the bottom. I can do that very easily by only changing the, the distance of the handles, not the angle. Notice that they're all basically flat. This just gives me a lot more control over what's happening. Whoops. Make sure you click on the actual point itself. But now you can see how much control I've got. Now with these inner points here, I'll take those and I'll put it that like that. And then this handle, I'll break with the convert point tool so that it is in the right place. And same thing here. And now, as long as I use the white arrow tool, these things will start all kind of coming together. So they snap together here.
They snap together there. Oh, that actually went out too far. And now I've started to get what is a relatively, you know, simple shape, but at least I've been able to keep my curves relatively regular. Some of you guys have got odd angles like this. That's not going to help you when you start trying to create a shape that has an even thing or an even line because what's going to happen is if, if this point is an A in the same basic position as the inner point and B the same basic direction, they're never going to match up well. So that's just a, you know, it's just a little tip on how to start working with these Bezier curves. But when you have compound paths especially, you want almost always. Now, I mean, of course, every rule is made to be broken. But generally speaking, you want, your, you want your points in a similar position on the inside and the outside line. And you want the handles pretty much going flat, perpendicular, so that the curve is coming in and out of them. And then you use the length of the handles to control that curve as opposed to the angle. And this will make your life so much easier if you just kind of stick to that general rule. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, it's a really simple little concept that's not that complicated, but having it work that way really can help you out so that you are, um, e it's easier for you to make nice, smooth lines. One last little tip. Illustrator will allow you to grab the line itself and try and change it. I really recommend you don't do that. It has a tendency to make changes very dramatically. And if you noticed here, if I was just trying to push this out, notice how it changes the angle of the handles. And so now it also changes down here. If I wanted to make this bulge out a little bit more, the better way to do it is to grab the handle, at least in this case, again, all rules are made to be broken, but is to grab the handle and to push the, and, and change the length of the handle as opposed to the angle. Because what that will do is it basically keeps this curve down here the same. So that, because if I start playing with this, now I'm also messing this up down here at the bottom. So even if I get what I want up here, it oftentimes will really screw things up on the other side of the curve. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, that's really basically it. <laughs>